19 of our Firebase real-time chat app series. This is actually going to be the second to last video, and we're going to take a look at setting up Crashlytics, fixing some bugs that I kind of skimmed over in the past few parts. So that said, we're going to get started by jumping straight into our workspace. So go ahead and jump into the workspace and let me run the app in our simulator. And let me lower my computer volume there. You guys don't need to hear that ding be super loud. And let's see, what do we want to do? So the first thing we'll do is let's talk about Crashlytics. So what the heck is it and how do we set it up? So if you go to Firebase, we're on our database here. On the left side, under quality, we want to open this up and go to Crashlytics. So if you go to this, you'll see a bunch of information about it. Basically, long story short, Crashlytics was this thing made by uh, this company called Fabric that Google since purchased for a ton of money. And if your app ever crashes in the wild on someone's device, you'll get a crash report uploaded here. So you can see exactly what caused the crash, what line it was, what the error was, and you can go to your code, fix it, submit an update to Apple, and uh, basically improve the quality for everybody. So we're going to quickly bring it in. You can watch these videos and stuff uh, on your own time, I guess. It's very easy to set up. We're simply going to hit this button to get started. And let's see what it asks us. Well, the first thing it wants to do is have us bring in the Crashlytics uh, framework and stuff and set it up. So it's just waiting here for the stuff to be set up. So let me hit this. There it goes, opens a new tab. Does it show me the code that I need in here? I guess not. Let's see, was there another link there? So there is uh, one thing we're gonna bring in via the dependency, and then we are gonna also bring in uh, one thing into our project. So let me skim through here. So this is telling us we need to bring in the Crashlytics or uh, the various pods, so analytics and stuff. So let's see, let's go through this one more time. So analytics at once. I think analytics includes Crashlytics now, which is interesting because back in the day we needed to bring in uh, something else. This is how to configure your Firebase app. Initialize Crashlytics. So this is the thing I was looking for. We want to copy this. And what this actually does is once we bring this into our project, whoops. Once we bring this into our project as a run script, it'll actually do all the Crashlytics setup under the hood. So go ahead and copy that. And uh, just because I'm paranoid, I'm gonna also bring in another framework into our project. And let's go into our project, CD in and open up our pod file. I could have swore that the CocoaPod we needed before I guess it was included in Firebase Analytics was included in Firebase slash Crashlytics. So the Analytics will bring in everything and the Crashlytics will only bring in Crashlytics. So I guess bringing in Analytics doesn't hurt either. Let's put that in here too. Let's lowercase that and let's learn how to spell correctly. We've gone through this whole series and I still don't know how to spell correctly. So let's fix that. Close text edit and let's run a pod install. And let's see if that Crashlytics one still exists because if it doesn't anymore, it'll complain because it doesn't know what it's looking for. So it looks like we're installing stuff successfully. So let's keep our fingers crossed that it actually exists. And CocoaPods loves to be slow whenever I'm doing any of these videos in true fashion. There it goes. Okay, looks like everything's successfully installed. So over here, I'm going to stop running the app by hitting the pause button and then hit the play button again to make sure things are still compiling. And while we do that, let's close this tab. And here it's still showing us a spinner because it's waiting for our app to connect to Crashlytics which we need to bring in that thing we copied from the Google Docs into the project. So we still compile here, looking good, looking good. And we wanna to go to the project here and make one change. Make sure you select your target, which is Messenger, and you wanna to go to Build Phases. You're gonna to wanna to hit this little plus and bring in a new Run Script phase. 
Basically, all this is telling the project is run the script at the given location we're going to paste in here when the app compiles. So if you paste it in, you notice the path is the root folder where the CocoaPods are installed slash Firebase Crashlytics slash run. So now if we go ahead and hit command R to build and run again, you'll see, look at that. So over here, it actually uh, successfully set up Firebase uh, Crashlytics and we ran it. So go ahead and hit this. And now whenever your app crashes, you'll get a crash uploaded here on Firebase. So the thing to understand is that the latency from when a crash occurs and the upload uh, is not very good. So it sometimes could take an hour or two to see it here. And there you have to symbolicate crashes too, which is a whole other story. I don't want to get into the weeds of that. There's actually really good detailed steps that'll pop up here. Once you have crashes and they're encrypted by default, it doesn't show you what it is, but it'll basically explain how to get it working. So that's how we bring in Crashlytics and set it up. So what else did I say we're going to do in this video? We're also going to fix some of those bugs. So let me log in with Joe's account. And one bug that I've consistently overlooked is when we start a new conversation and send the very first message, it doesn't actually uh, send the message like in terms of the UI. It sends it under the hood, but it doesn't show it here. So we're going to fix that. Uh, the other thing I didn't cover, and I, I guess I might as well mention it, is the colors for these, uh, these text bubbles. What we can do is we can go to our chat view controller. And if we go to where we conform to the message list protocols, which is in an extension somewhere, this file has gotten pretty big. So let's see, is this what we want? Nope, this is not what we want. Let's keep going. Nope, that's not it either. There it is. Uh, one of these protocols, I don't recall which one exactly, has a function called background color. And it is a background color for message at uh, index path in the collection view. So what we can do in here is uh, we can first get the sender for that message by saying let sender is message dot sender. And we can say if uh, sender dot, um, let's see, sender dot sender ID equals self sender dot sender ID, then this is our message that we've sent. Otherwise, it's a received message. So we can actually set the color, and I believe this requires us to return a color, which it does. So we don't even need this else. What we can say is if uh, this is a received message, we can say return light gray. Otherwise, if we're sending the message, let's say our sent messages are blue, similar to iMessage, so we'll return link. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run, and you should see now that our uh, you should see now that our messages reflect the colors we supplied. So you saw the blue there, and this is starting to look an awful lot like uh, like iMessage. I'm not a fan of the gray personally, but uh, but either way, you can uh, you can actually just omit the gray altogether, and you can say if this if it's not self sender, um, return something else. So I'm just gonna leave this as uh, let's see uh, return secondary system background. So using these semantic color palettes with our coloring is really, really cool to get really nice dark mode effects. So now you'll see it's like a dark gray, but it fits in really, really well with the dark black background for dark mode. And in light mode, it's also going to be a light color, very similar to iMessage. Let's see, what else? So we've got these avatars in here that should show an image, but they clearly don't. So I'd like to tell you guys that to do that. So there's another function in here in one of these protocols that's called, I believe, configure avatar view. And this function takes an avatar view for a given message at a target index path in the collection view. And if we click into this avatar view, I think there's an image view in here. Let's see, there's initials, 
There's a placeholder. There is, there should definitely be an image view in here. There's a radius, frame, bounds. Well, it appears there's everything but an image view. There it is, set image from initials we can do. We can do a get image. And there should also be calculate, calculation for sizing and stuff. But let's see. We're gonna say avatar view. And we want to uh, set an avatar, interesting. So let's say set image. There it is, okay, we can set an image with a URL. Uh, with a completion, we can, oh, this is SD set image. Okay, that's very interesting. So the avatar view itself, let me double check, looks like this is an image view. Ah, it is an image view, okay, duh. So this itself is an image view. So what we could do is we can get the image URL for each of the users based on how we set up our Firebase storage and we can feed that into this avatar view. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this function is called for every single message, if I'm not mistaken, and we don't wanna request a download URL every time. So what we should do is we should put a property in this class where we can save uh, the download URL to the very first time we get it for both users. So let's come all the way up here and let's add two properties. All right, so we're going to add two private properties in here. First one is going to be sender photo URL. Next one will be, uh, I'll call it other user since that's the kind of semantic we've been using for this whole series. And let's go back to that configure avatar view function and let's actually check so what we're going to do is first we get the avatar view and the message so first we're going to check um who is the message but who does it belong to so we're going to say if rather we're going to say let sender equals message dot sender then we're going to say if sender dot sender id is equivalent to self sender dot sender id then we need to show our image otherwise other user image and uh, in this case what we're going to say is if let our image let's say current user image uh, is self dot what did I call a photo URL sender photo URL then we can use it directly so we can say avatar view SD set image with a URL and go ahead and pass in current user it should be URL and the completion block is irrelevant so we just pass a nil here now if we don't have that URL we need to fetch it fetch URL and basically the same thing down below in the else whoops in this case, we care about the other user photo URL. Let's make this other user photo URL. And let's pass this guy in here. Completion is still nil. So now how do we get the download URL? Now, if you recall, we have that function off of our, uh, our storage manager to get a download URL. So we're gonna say storage manager shared. And we want the download URL for a given path. This returns a results we're going to switch that results and in the case of uh, success whoops we're going to have a url and in the case of failure we're just going to print out said error like so now what's the path going to be so this is the current user so we know in our storage bucket, what we have done is uh, we've put all the images at images slash their safe email underscore profile underscore picture dot PNG if my memory serves correctly. So let's double check that. So in here, we are going to go to storage and we're gonna go to images. And in here, like I thought, we have the email address underscore profile picture dot PNG. So let's come back here 
And how the heck do we create this thing? So we're going to first need to get the user email. So we're going to say email is user defaults, standard, value for key, email, as a string. Else we want to return. And then we want to convert this to safe email is going to be database manager shared safe rather not shared because we want the static reference safe email pass in the email and then path is going to be the safe email first we're going to put images actually images slash safe email underscore profile picture dot p n g so hopefully i spelt all of that correctly this is just complaining because we haven't used this yet so go ahead and pass this guy into this parameter and what else do we want to do in here so now once we get the url back we want to update the avatar view with that image so we're going to say avatar view uh, sd set image with a given url and that's not the one we want. We want the one with just one completion handler. Whoops. SD set image with a URL and a completion. So this one. And now this is a UI operation being done in a async return block. So we need to do this operation on the main thread. So we're going to wrap this in a call that is something along the lines of dispatch queue.main.async and throw that in there. So if you hit command B, this part should be building. And actually, I forgot to do one thing in here, and it's actually super important. So now that we've fetched the download URL, we want to save it to this thing, the photo URL. Uh, because the next time we call this function, we don't want to fetch the URL again. It's super redundant, and it drives up our Firebase reading costs. So we're going to say this equals URL. Now we want to make sure we don't cause a memory leak in the retain cycle. So make it weak self and do self optional. Now before we run it, let me just copy all of this stuff. And we're going to drop it on into the else for the other user. And let's just change all of this stuff up. So the email is going to be self.otheruseremail. And let's see, the safe email is the same. The path is actually the same because we pass in the safe email. We call storage manager. Now for this one, we should assign it to other user photo URL. And URL, URL, looking good to me. Go ahead and hit command B. Hit command R to build and run. And let's check out our avatar pictures that should show up now. So if we look down here, we see our picture where Joe the sender and there's my picture on the other side for the other user we're talking with. So looking really, really good. Um, now, what are some bugs that I mentioned we want to basically figure out how to solve? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to register another user so we don't have to continuously go and delete stuff from the database. So let's sign out. And let's see, let's just hit command R to make sure that uh, we don't have any issues. Let's hit register. Let's go ahead and select a photo and we're going to use choose, of course, because we don't have a simulator camera uh, and it's deciding to be slow. What are we going to pick for the picture? What about this one? And let me zoom in here. Like so. And let's hit this to select it. And for the user, let's call the user, let's do Emily Smith. Joe and Emily are related. And what else do we want? We want their email. So we're going to say Emily at gmail.com. And password will be password because we are super secure. So go ahead and hit this. We sign in. And the first thing you notice, actually, is that we've got this uh, wrong person's conversation loading in here. So that's really not good. That's a pretty big security leak. So if we close the app and reopen it, we notice we actually signed in with Joe's account. So what gives? So let's sign out again. Let's see what happened in our database. It's clearly, that's uh, that's an edge case somewhere, somewhere that I definitely uh, forgot to take a look at. So we're going to go to our database. And let's see if we got Emily in here. 
once it decides to load, come on, we don't have that much data. We can close this and close this, and it looks like we do have Emily registered, and we should have Emily in this data in this collection too, which we do. And then what else? What else do we need? Looks like these are all correct, but you know what I bet it is? When we sign out a user, I wonder if we are actually getting rid of the name and email that we have cached. Because if we're not, then we're probably using that same cache, and the last user that was signed in was Joe. So in Profile View Controller, when we call the sign out stuff, what we should also be doing in here is getting rid of the cache, which is in User Defaults. So let's do that. So we're going to say standard uh, set value for key. We're going to pass in nil for email and for name. And the other thing that I bet we're not doing is when we register a new user, we also want to cache this. So let's go to that register view controller. And let's see where we do that Firebase stuff in here. Looks like we do it right here. This is where we upload their image, and then we do a database manager, we call that. And outside of this, let's see, where do we do the actual registration? We do an auth and we sign them in. We do a create user rather, which will also sign them in. And we don't do a user defaults right here, as I suspected. So go ahead and paste that there, and we want to set a value for the email and name. And their name is going to be their first name plus their last name. And we're going to throw in the email there too. So we're going to say their email is email. And this is going to be their first name with a space and their last name. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And let's try to register. Uh, well, we don't want to register again because Emily was successfully inserted into the database. But maybe we'll try another user. But let me see if I can log in with Emily's account. So go ahead and sign in. And we should sign in. And we're still seeing the wrong uh, stuff in here. And actually, I know why. It's because once we log out, it'll clear the cache. Now that we have logged out, uh, and let's close and reopen the app, the user default should be empty now. So when I sign in, it should basically, whoops. Let's try that again. It should basically set up the user default stuff again, and it should have no conversations because we're now in Emily's account as suspected. So if we go to the profile, we see Emily's picture and Emily's name as well as Emily's email. Now let's log out of here again, and let's try this one more time with a new registration to make sure we fix this bug. Let's pick a different picture. Let's go with this, and yeah, let me zoom in a little bit, and let's call this user, I don't know, let's go with Dan. Dan must really love flowers. So Dan, uh, Smith, and let's go with a different last name. Let's go with Dan Jones, and we'll say dan at gmail.com, because apparently everybody uses Gmail, and we're going to say password for password. And we're going to sign, rather create Dan, and it should sign Dan in, and we shouldn't have anything in here because, of course, uh, Dan is a new user, and we fetch Dan Fitcher and his stuff, and we have no conversations here. So cool, that thing is fixed now. And we were going to actually, we were doing the whole exercise to look at how to fix the issue of sending the first message. So let's actually go ahead and search for a user here. And we get sent to the new message creation kind of panel screen. What we want to do uh, in chat view controller is there's a function where we send the message and that function is, I think it's called did uh, or send button clicked or something, this one right here. And we do a if block to see if it's a new conversation. And if the message is successfully sent, what we want to do in here is we want to not only update this, but we want to now assign the conversation ID and fetch the conversation messages. So it's super easy to do that. We're going to grab the message ID that we create 
and actually not the message ID. Interesting. So how do we create conversation IDs? Let's go ahead into this function and see what we did. So we created an email. We created a reference. Where is that conversation ID I'm looking for? So our conversation ID, we're basically taking the first message's ID and we're prepending a prefix of conversation. So I'm going to copy this. And basically, if we successfully send the message, what we can do is we know that the prefix is conversation and we know we already have a message up here. So I could just put that there. There's our conversation ID. We can say self dot conversation ID is now the conversation ID. And we can name this more appropriately and say new conversation ID new conversation ID like that. Go ahead and hit command B. Well, actually this is complaining now that I see. And the reason this is complaining is if we click to where we defined it, we made it a constant, I believe. So go ahead and make this var so it's mutable. And let's go back to that function. So you notice I use command F to find stuff in the class all the time. It's a lot faster than just reading through everything. So quick little tip if you ever fill yourself you're wasting time looking for stuff uh, and now that we've set the conversation id what we can do is there is a function we have called start listening for messages something like that uh, listen for messages in conversation id and uh, should scroll to bottom will be i guess yes so we're gonna say self we're gonna listen for conversations in a uh, or listen for messages in a conversation. Say true here. And this is going to be this conversation ID. So we can unwrap this, but it's kind of pointless because we already have the conversation ID up here. So if you go ahead and hit command B, looks like we have an error because I probably typed something wrong somewhere. Why is this complaining? This is basically giving us an error saying use of unresolved identifier uh, yeah, again, I can't spell today or any day. So make that true. Hit Command B again, and let's try sending that first message. So hit Command R. Let's wait for it. All right, whose account are we signed in here? Looks like we are signed into a Dan's account. So let me come over here, and let's create a new conversation with another user. And we're, what we're going to say over here now is we're going to say, Hey, this is a new message, and hey, this is a new message. Ah, I can't type today. This is a new, let's try that one more time. Hey, this is a new message, and I already messed it up for the fourth time, but that's okay. And we're going to hit send, and now you should see that uh, the message popped up over here. It did not scroll to the bottom appropriately, and I noticed that this is a simulator issue. The other thing that you'll notice is now that we've sent the message, we probably don't want this in here. So we probably want to clear this out. So we have the conversation popped up in our list in real time. We can click into it, and our message should still be loading there. Um, so how do we clear the text view? It's uh, very simple. We basically have a reference to it. We can say self dot uh, message. I think it's self dot message input bar. And there's a text view on here or input text view, it looks like. And we can say set value. We actually want the text on it. We're going to say the text equals nil. Let's see if we can assign that. I believe we can. So once we've sent a message, we want to nil out whatever text is in there for a new message. And actually, we also want to do that when we send a normal message too. So this this uh, else block, let's see what this else block is for. This is if the message is not a new message. And if we successfully send it, again, we want to clear out the sending field. And we want to make sure we do weak self over here, which is why it's complaining. So weak self like that. 
and that'll fix itself. And what else do we have to do in here? Let's hit Command R, and let's try sending another message and make sure the field clears itself. So there is our message. So we're gonna say, hello. And there it goes and it cleared out our uh, message field as expected. So beautiful, looking good. Uh, what else do we wanna do? So what were we doing over here? So I noticed when we actually don't have any conversations, nothing actually shows. So if we go ahead and delete a conversation, we should have something here that says no conversations. And I think, uh, I think, yeah, we don't have it when we open the app fresh either, so it's not a reload issue. Looks like a logic issue somewhere. So let's see, we definitely created that view in here that shows a label, I think, with no conversations. And let's see, we add it as a sub view, we're doing that. And then we call, we call a function to start listening for conversations. Or let's see, I have fetch conversations too, what does this guy do? So it looks like fetch conversations just sets the table view hidden to false. So that's not right. We don't want to show the table view from the get-go. We want to listen for conversations, and if there are, we want to show it. So I think initially we just uh, showed this, basically, or called this to hard code it. So let's get rid of that. And let's see what goes on in this function that we wrote. We're going to basically get the email, get the create an observer for uh, if the user logs in. Rather, if uh, for the observer, we're going to remove it if the user has logged in. And we're going to try to get conversations. And if we successfully get conversations and they uh, are not empty, we want to call that other fetch conversations function, which basically just unhides the table view. It's pretty poorly named. We should probably rename this. And in the case that we don't get any conversations, we want to show that other label, this guy right here. And I think there's another function that should unhide it, but actually it looks like there is not. And it looks like we're not even set setting a frame to this guy. So let me do a few things. The first thing I'm going to do is let me get rid of this function since all it really does is uh, just unhides a table view. It doesn't really warrant a function. And let's go back to that start listening function and we'll just unhide the table view uh, straight up in here if we do have conversations. Uh, otherwise, what we can do is if we don't have conversations, we're gonna say hidden for the table view is true. And for the no conversation labels dot uh, is hidden, we're gonna say this, man, I really can't type today. There it goes. We're gonna say this is false. And we're also gonna do this in the failure case. If we're not able to get conversations, we're just gonna show this uh, same label as if it failed. And let's go ahead and make sure we set a label uh, frame. So here we have defined it and we add as, add as, as a sub view and we unhide it, but we never really set the frame for it. And the frame should be set in a function called view did layout sub views right here where we set the table view frame. So we're gonna say for this, the frame is a CG rect with a x, y, width, and height. And we're gonna say the x is 10, width is view.width minus 20, height is 100, and the y is going to be view.height minus 100 divided by two, which will center it. And I think that should be good to go to show our, uh, to show our label. So go ahead and hit Command R. And we should see our label here, beautiful, got our label. And let's see what happens if we create another conversation if it goes away. So let's find another user, let's go with Joe. And we're gonna say, hey, how's it going? And we're gonna send that message here. We're gonna come back and as I suspected, we have this showing up, but now we also have this showing still. And the way we can fix that is pretty easy. Basically, whenever we call uh, this function and actually do get a conversation, not only do we want to unhide the table view, we also want to hide the 
label like that. So go ahead and hit Command R. And let's try creating that conversation again one more time. So now you'll see if I go ahead and delete this, the label shows up in a reactive way. And if we go and create another chat, and who am I signed in with? So we can chat with Emily. And I can say, hey. And once you send our message and come back, we have that label gone and our conversation list has updated. So looking pretty good. So I think that's just about all the bugs, the major bugs that we had to fix uh, for this video. So we set up Crashlytics, we set up uh, or fixed a bunch of our bugs, including the registration, sending the message directly like that, uh, the label here, the reactivity of it. In the next and final video, we're gonna clean up our code. We're gonna add documentation to it. Uh, I'll show you guys how to use doc strings. And then we will wrap up this series. So it has been a long journey to get here and I'm pretty proud of what we've built. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Uh, are there things to be improved and to extend? 100%. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, where we've gotten and I hope you guys are as well. That said, if you haven't smashed that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, don't forget to do so as always. Subscribe if you're new. I'd love to grow this channel even faster with all of your guys' help. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.